but we're getting through it. Um, it's never easy. Um, you know, I think it goes so much deeper than coach being our coach. If you're a former player or you knew that uh, he was so much more than that, he was a mentor, he was a father figure. He taught us about life as much as he did um, playing the game of basketball, which was immense. Uh, he right. was as good as it got on the court, but um, I think his legacy will be a lot of what he's done while he was on the court teaching us were all life skills as well that's helped a vast number of his former players be highly successful uh once their second career started and that's always been something that in our program now we talk about that you know players think we're all going to play until we're 40 50 years old it doesn't happen that way we're going to have second careers and coaches always there to prepare us and always there to help uh once those careers started outside of the game you know, Coach, people will talk about uh, all of the wins and the, the three national championships, the five final fours, and, you know, maybe, uh, you know, some of the things that happen on the court with the passion. What don't we know about uh, Coach Knight, though? That what, what didn't we see? And I think you probably just touched on it a bit uh, with your first answer there. But what, what don't we know about uh, this legendary figure? Yeah, you know, he was the general. And, you know, just like, um, you know, he had time Army and West Point, you know, it was – um you know i think that's who he was that uh if you look at his kind of his mentors uh, that's the way they coached yeah. and um he brought that toughness to him he brought that he, he only let so many people get in uh to who he was he wanted that mystique and and as people that played under him well you you'd go through a wall for him and you knew how he was going to prepare you um i think his will to prepare uh his understanding of winning his self-discipline, uh, all of his teams were so disciplined. Um, very seldom did Bob Knight teams beat themselves. Um, you had to play well. You had to go beat yeah. beat uh, Indiana teams. And uh, that's a tribute to how good he was as a coach. But I think people don't get to see is how caring he was, how loving he was. Uh, he loved his players. He loved his team. He loved his school. Um, and he was always giving back. Uh, he didn't always want you to see it because I think he needed that mystique of um, I'm the general and it's going to be my way um, or you can find somewhere else. And I think you understood that as a player. And, you know, today you talk about culture. I mean, that's a big word now. And, yeah. you know, I kind of laugh uh, when I hear all about that. When you, when you play at Indiana, it's built in. Uh, you knew what you were getting into uh, playing for Coach Knight. That culture was already there, uh, and it was Coach Knight's way. And you better understand that way before you get there, uh, or you won't make it. And um, it was a highly successful way, again, like I said, not just what he taught on the court, but what we took away as players off the court. Coach, what made uh, Coach Knight such a, an amazing basketball coach, actually getting into the, the basketball now? I mean, You've obviously, uh, you know, held uh, some of the most prestigious jobs in all of college basketball. You know uh, how hard it is to win. There's a lot of great coaches out there. Why was why was Bob the best? Well, one, I think he was um, he was a very flexible leader. Um, you know, I saw that on the Olympic team uh, in '84. You know, coaching the likes of Michael Jordan to begin with, uh, but perkins and ewing and mullen and we had so many great players on that team and what a team <laughs> and and i'm sitting there they're looking at me as a 19 year old i'd only had one year with coach but they're sitting there hey what's what's next what's what's going to happen next and and i could almost tell them what was going to happen after just one year and to me that was coach he was flexible in the understanding of it but he brought he brought who he was even to a four-month olympic team uh he was not going to deviate no matter who you were, what your name was, you know, only he and Dean Smith have won national titles as players and coaches. Yeah. Um, just an elite group. Uh, I thought he changed the game. If you look at coaches era, there was no, there was no shot clock. So you could run, you, you could run the, the motion forever. And then he, he didn't change. He didn't all of a sudden go away from motion offense. Right. He just learned how to use motion offense in a 30 second, 35 second shot right. clock. He didn't change his man-to-man -man defense. He just learned how to guard the three-point line uh, when the three-point line came in. Um, he was just an incredible mind. I thought he was a genius when it came to watching film and preparing his teams. Uh, I think that was probably the greatest thing he did was to prepare his teams uh, for battle. 
how about the influence he had on you, Coach, and and the tremendous career you had as a player, the tremendous career you've obviously had as a as a head coach. How about the impact that Coach Knight had on you? Yeah, you know, he came into my home. I was fortunate. I was a coach's kid. So my dad, I grew up in a coach's home. And when he made his home visit to our home in Newcastle, he's he only gave me four promises. He said, you'll play with great teammates. That I have incredible teammates. <laughs> yeah. You'll play for championships. That happened, both sure. conference and nationally. Uh, you're going to get your degree. That happened in four years. And you're going to have a friend for life. And those were the promises wow. Coach made. You know, I'm not sure there were – all coaches throughout the country are making those type of promises. Um, those were promises that I had to go earn. I had to go work for. Right. Um, but he helped develop those things. I was just a, a scrawny kid about a buck 50 going off to play in the big 10. And he took a gamble on me. And, you know, so I appreciate that more than anything. And then the friendships we've had since leaving Indiana and, and graduating, what he's meant to me in the coaching profession and, and how he's helped me there, um, I'm very appreciative of. You get the feeling, Coach, you're, you're never going to see another guy like Bob Knight, uh, unfortunately, right? I mean, he one of a kind, and I, I don't see his uh, you know, his kind coming around anymore, and and that's that's sad. No, because we need we need more of those. Uh, yeah. We need more Coach Knights, more Dean Smiths. You know, the, the list goes on and yeah. on of uh, some of the greats, uh, not either have passed or have retired. Um, there's been a lot of those great ones that, uh, coaches like myself learn from. Um, and now, you know, the games change, times have changed. There's a lot of changes in our rules that have, have changed and players obviously are maybe in a, a much better place financially, right? but I'm not sure they're in a better place of being ready for life. Uh, and that's the scary part. Um, and those coaches that, and I was very fortunate to play for one in coach Knight. Um, I knew he prepared me most for when I got out of basketball and started my second career.